MLR Conference Finals, folks. Who says you need to be the home team to win, huh? Both the away teams get wins in this one. Some surprising results. I've just gone ahead and watched both the games. A bit delayed, but uh, better late than never. And, uh, yeah, if you guys are Super Rugby or Premiership or URC fans and your seasons are done, there's one week of MLR left if you want to watch it. Uh, it's always available for free on the Rugby Network, which is linked down in the description. Like I said, free service, so live or on demand. Um, there's going to be some All Blacks, former All Blacks on in that final uh, next week. But, um, yeah, we'll go through these games and you guys can let me know your thoughts. First one is Houston and Seattle. Um, Seattle get the win, despite the fact if you've been following the MLR, they're not even supposed to be there. They didn't finish in the playoff spots, but... Um, with a couple of other teams, the Giltinis and Gilgronis getting disqualified. Uh, the Seattle boys end up in the playoffs and have made the absolute most of their chance, haven't they? And to be honest, they have finished the season really well, so uh, congratulations to them, man. They uh, they did go behind. Kotzer got the first try. That was one of those ones where the ball drops and everyone just stops playing, waiting for the knock-on, but there wasn't one. So Cots is the, the guy with the initiative to keep going. So Houston goes 7-0 up. Both sides exchange penalties, although Lubbaskakini's one was massive. It was like more than halfway. But uh, then the Seattle boys start getting into the game. I mean, uh, Malcolm's one is from a mall. They missed the conversion, so they're still two points behind. But a penalty system 10-11... Or 11 10 in front, and then Seattle don't go behind from there, man. Uh, they get one on 29 minutes through Smith. That one looked a little bit dodgy with some obstruction, but the TMO cleared that one. And then two minutes later, Matthews, it's Alatimu. I mean, Alatimu has been cracking all season, and uh, yeah, he, he showed what he's all about in this game. Like, kick return, steps the on rushing defenders, creates the big line break, and then the try assist pass to Matthews. Uh, yeah, suddenly, like, Houston have gone from being comfortably, not comfortably, but, you know, decently in front to three scores behind, like 25-10. The Houston did try for a, uh, a try of their own, like five meters out there, really chasing the game before half time. They knock it on so they don't get it. So they do go into the sheds 15 points down. That being said, second half, they did get that try they were looking for. Labaskakni got that one. He had a pretty good game, to be fair. Um, his one was a step of his own. That was after a maul and some phases. So the Ford set it up and the backs finished it off kind of the way it should be. Missed conversion, but at least 10 points means it's a two-score game instead of three. Uh, and then Dyer got the try five minutes later. He gets his first to two. And um, yeah, that one was Labaskakni with his turn for the, uh, the old kick return. And he gets the try assist for that one. So yeah, man, 22-25, that's game on. But then uh, the Seattle guys kind of wake back up. It's a similar story. They, you know, the second half of the half managed to really pile on some points. Majola gets one. Al Jabori goes off injured as well, which is unfortunate. So it's kind of a double whammy for the Houston guys because they've not only conceded a try, but lost one of their Eagles players. And then um, when Neil gets his try in 57, I write the note, that's probably game over. I mean, Alatimu setting that one up with kick return play again. And then... Um, yeah, the, uh, the Houston guys do get... Um, oh, sorry, Matthews gets another one. Yeah, Matthews gets one. That one was just absolute gas turnover ball. So 46-22 was uh, proper hiding. I was going to say um, Houston did get consolation on 75. Dyer got his second, but way too little, way too late. So, yeah, man, that's um, that one's not that surprising. Like, I think that game was a bit of a coin toss. Maybe you could say Houston at home, but as I said, Seattle have been really good. So... Not, like, entirely surprised about that result. I can't say the same about the second one. I genuinely thought, despite the fact that New York have been good all year as well, like, New England have been kind of next-level good, haven't they? They went on a, a record-breaking MLR run for uh, for wins in a row. They did drop a couple towards the end of the season, which was maybe, maybe a little bit signs that they weren't... They weren't going to be able to keep that run going, but surely New England were massive favorites for this one. 24-16. New England are in front for the majority of this game, but it's a good final 10 minutes for New York. That uh, Did I say New York were in front of New England? New England are in front for the majority of the game. New York get a kind of couple of um, late tries to put themselves in front. It didn't start happily for New York when uh, they lose their own line out. And it ends up with Bodine Waka over the line a few phases later. It's it's kind of painful stuff if you're a New York fan. Bodine Waka, if you haven't been watching the MLR, has been phenomenal all season. Alatimu as well, but Waka especially. He's been just the star of the show. He gets all the points for the New England guys. 
uh, in this one. Um, New York did have a, a lot of pressure on, to be fair, but Emery pushed his first kick wide for New York, which was a little bit troubling. One of those ones where you're thinking is the pressure of the occasion uh, getting to you, although Emery's been in some big games in, uh, in his career, but it was a poor strike. Waka didn't make a mistake on 17 minutes when he had a chance, so 10-0 up at home. You're thinking this is probably just going according to the script that New England are just going to be able to cruise to victory if they can keep this up. Um, New York were kind of struggling a little bit under the high ball, but they did manage to finally take one, which led to the Bonasso try on 19 minutes. Um, kind of much needed for the game because otherwise I think New England may be uh, looking at running away with it. But yeah, 10 points to 7. That's properly game on. New England, though, hit back with a penalty. So 13-7. New York reply, 13-10. So a real tit-for-tat stuff. And um, the New England defense right before halftime did hold for quite some time. So it would be unfair to say that, like, um, over the course of the whole half, that New, New England were comfortably in front because New York did put them under a lot of pressure. But uh, as I said, they missed a penalty and then they uh, they couldn't convert before halftime. So only a three-point deficit. That being said, Waka kicks another one at the start of the second half, but that's the last points they score. It's 16-10 up. And then the game kind of, I guess, cruises for a wee bit. The New York scrum's looking pretty good, which is encouraging uh, for the final, I suppose. They would go uh, put a heap of pressure on. New England would get a turnover. It was their defense just kind of able to hold the New York boys out. But finally, Nehemiah Milner Scudder, 69 minutes. He's not played that many minutes for... Um, for New York this year, kind of a late signing, but he's the one who had manages to go over. Co had gone close in the build-up, Andy Ellis with the pass. So, like I said, a bit of an All Blacks collection connection with the uh, with the New York boys. So, with that massive conversion, pressure sideline kick, 17-16, not long to play. So, New York in front for like the first time in the game, with only 10 minutes to go. New England maybe looking a little bit stunned at that point but as I said they've been under pressure for ages it gets worse for New England because they look like they want to get a um get one of the New York boys in the bin for like a high or shoulder tackle on Waka but the ref goes back to a previous phase where one of the New England boys that was um or Gorman had done a similar tackle so they end up getting carded so not only do they have to chase the game but they have to do it with a man down they can't do it. It's all New York. They put the pressure on. Wide ball this time to Co. I think it was Heighton with the try assist. Wide pass. Um, it's a six-point lead, so it's an important conversion to get, and they nail it. So it's uh, 24-16. Eight-point lead is, is going to be game over. So it truly is pretty shocked. I mean, as I said, not totally, but if you'd asked me a couple of weeks ago who you're betting on, especially once the Kilgronis and Kiltinis were out, I would have said New England all day because they've been phenomenal all season, but... In the, uh, in the playoffs, I guess anything can happen. And congratulations to New York. They are going to host. They are going to host the final. I don't think tickets are quite on sale yet, but they'll be hosting the Seawolves. So that's going to be quite an interesting watch next week. So yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on these games. Are you kind of likewise relatively surprised? Or could you see both these sides who admittedly have been good towards the tail end of the season? Um, did you see them getting away wins? Who's your pick for the final? And um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Together.